Okay. Well, I do want to mention at least one. I don't really um think it's re like relatively obscure. I do know it's not particularly WWE related. It was just called Legends of Wrestling, and it, I, I know it had Hogan and Andre on it, and it had a couple other wrestlers. I think it was a mixture because it was just Legends of Wrestling in general, whether or not they were you know um from WWE or not. And I just saw it. And I was like, hey, this looks kind of interesting. It'll be kind of cool to have a different, like, wrestling game that's not necessarily WWE or whatever the hell. And, you know, still got Hogan on it. Still got Andre on it. And I forgot who else. But, um, no, it just, I don't know. It played slow as all fuck. And it was boring. It wasn't fun at all. And, I don't know. I, I only made a Legends of Wrestling Part 2. But I was just so worried after playing the first one. I'm like, ah, no, no. And that's what I missed. That's what I really missed. I guess, oh, shit, I should do that. I should I should resubscribe to Gamefly. Because that's the thing, you know, like, nowadays, there's not many places left to actually rent games. Either you just, like, take the blind plunge and buy them or whatever. Because you can't you can't rent them anymore and say, like, oh, this yeah. game sucks and give it back or, or whatever. You got, you got to fucking buy it, you know. And, um... Yeah, I'm gonna check. I, I think it was for the PS2 or something, or Xbox yeah, 360. Came, one of those. They came out, they came out for uh, GameCube, PS2, and the original Xbox. Um, I, I actually like those games pretty good. They weren't great. There was three of them. There was. Uh, oh my Legend god! It made a third one. one. The third one. Yeah, it's it's interesting. The, the third one was called Showdown Legends of Wrestling, and they were kind of trying to rip off SmackDown in that, you know, the name thing. But um, they weren't too bad. They had a good idea. It was a claim, so they're always a mixed bag. What's What they did was they, they improved the Attitude Engine from WWF Attitude, and they kind of tweaked it to be more grappling-based. But like you said, it was a little clunky. Um, it was easier to play than Warzone or Attitude. So, so did Part 2 actually, like, fucking improve it, or what? They got better as they went along, but there was problems along the way. Like, the rosters were great. Like, by the third one, they had pretty much everybody from the 80s they had, and the 90s, because they added Sting and Diamond Dallas Page and the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, by the third one, they had a great roster. And... I'm all about the creator wrestler in wrestling games, and by the third one, they got better with the rest with the creator wrestler option as well because they put in gear for guys like Shawn Michaels and Triple H, and you know you could make a lot of the guys who were on TV at that point, and they streamlined the controls quite a bit and sped up the gameplay. So each game got better in the series. And the rosters especially, although they lost a couple of the Von Erics along the way, which was disappointing. Uh, they added more real-life arenas like Madison Square Garden, the Tokyo Dome, and things like that. The, the only problem was, with the third one, it's the only problem. It's a pretty big fucking problem. Um, the third one shipped with a glitch, where for some reason the game would just randomly freeze and lock up and you'd have to restart it. That sucks. It does suck because from the gameplay aspect, they finally were they finally made it pretty good and I, I liked the first one too, but it took some getting used to because it was very slow and what I didn't like about those games, which was a concession to standards of video games, but nobody really had accurate move sets because most of these guys wrestled in the seventies in the 80s so it would be headlocks and bear hugs but you know for the purposes of a video game you got ricky steamboat doing diamond cutters and pedigrees and rock bottoms and stuff and <laughs> oh, i never really i didn't care for that what i liked about the engine for the legends of wrestling and they still haven't really mastered this too much with any other wrestling games since then is that you can really chain moves together like for example if you were playing as scott steiner and you went to throw a guy for a suplex. Halfway through the move, if you hit nothing, he would just slam the guy. If you hit X, he would pin the guy off the suplex. If you hit circle, after he hit the suplex, he would grab the guy's legs and you could turn it into an STF or something like that. So there was a real 
chain system of linking moves. It's like you ever you know Samoa Joe how he power bombs a guy and then he goes right to the STF. Yeah. You can't you can't do that in a wrestling game most of the times, but you could do that in Legends of Wrestling. Hmm. It's the only series where you could do that kind of stuff. So I thought that was great, but the timing was tricky. The controls were awkward. It was definitely a game where you had to play a lot of it to really understand it. And I could see how it wouldn't really appeal too much to a lot of people um, because games like No Mercy and uh, SmackDown, they were very pick up and play. And that one had a bit of a learning curve to it. Once you got good at it, it could be a lot of fun. I like recreating the classic feuds. Like if you had Hogan, if you did Hulk Hogan's career mode, they would have him fight Big John Studd in the $15,000 body slam challenge. Or uh, you'd have him fight Andre the Giant. They wouldn't say at WrestleMania, but they would say at the Pontiac Silver Dome in 1987. And you'd have to, the mini game, you'd have to slam Andre to, to be able to win the match. Hmm. Stuff like that I thought was cool. Um, and the third one, they definitely hammered out all the tweaks, but they, they rushed it and they didn't catch the freezing glitch. So it can be very frustrating to be uh, playing a game and in the middle of a really good match and all of a sudden it locks up. You're like, God damn it. It was it was very disheartening. But, I mean, in short doses, it was still fun. But without those games, uh, they never would have made the Legends of WrestleMania or WWE All-Stars games because they weren't even thinking like that. Actually, point of fact, that Legends of Wrestling series is why they put all these legends in the games now because at that point when those came out in like 2001 and 2 um vince and it, with the thq games the smackdowns uh, they didn't put legends in their games the thinking was that people didn't care about guys who weren't on tv right now so they well why are we going to put bret hart in a wrestling game he doesn't work here anymore he's not on tv but then a lot of people bought Legends of Wrestling, even though it wasn't that you know popular, but a lot of people bought it. And then the very next SmackDown game that comes out, they put like four or five Legends in there. They put Hogan and Greg the Hammer Valentine and Bret Hart. And then now they do, they put like, that's half the roster, right? They come out with a new game, and that's like the second thing they announce is, look at all these Legends we're putting in here. Never would have happened without that series. So it's a footnote, but hats off to acclaim you know they had an idea and they maybe could have executed it better but it, it completely changed wrestling games for the better so good on them for that that's something you know they, they're not going to get the credit for necessarily but and they probably would have started doing it eventually in the wwe games but it wasn't a priority until the legends of wrestling series happened all right guys i had a question here because i've been seeing this game for a while um, on the PS4, like, you know, how you could just download it and stuff. There's a game called Fire Pro Wrestling World for the PS4. Have either of you played it? Or, I mean, is it good or whatever? Because it's like 50 bucks. I'm not throwing 50 bucks away, you know what I mean? Like, Well, I haven't played it, but I, I that's just because I don't have a PS4. Uh, but I'll say right now, I mean, it's Fire Pro. And I've known people who played it, and it's just... I'm sure Ninja can attest to this. Is like there's wrestling games, and then there's Fire Pro. And there's Fire Pro. I mean, by some accounts, depending on who you talk to, uh, when you talk to people about what's the best wrestling game series ever, you're gonna get two answers usually. You're gonna get the N64 wrestling games from THQ, or you're gonna get Fire Pro, and those are like the top of the heap. I see um, Kenny Omega's in it. I see there's a couple of DLC packs with some Joshi girls, including uh, B. Priestley. Uh, one that kind of stands out, which is kind of sad now, is Hana Kimura's actually in the game as DLC. Uh, have you ever played any Fire Pro? Uh, no. Oof. I mean, that's why I'm asking y'all. That's why I'm asking y'all. Like, is this worth well, it? Here's, like, here's the, here's I the have thing. Fire Pro... Uh, uh, I have Fire Pro World. Um, yeah, definitely go for it. You will absolutely love it. How, how does it, like, is it, like, you know, learning curve or anything I yes. should know? Or Here's the thing. You're going to, although from what I've heard, this one apparently, allegedly, is a little easier than some of the other ones. Ninja would have to corroborate that. But 
Fire Pro is challenging. Okay, now it is a very simple game to learn how to play. You just walk up to your opponent, you immediately lock up, you press a direction and a button, and you're either going to do a move or they're going to counter the move. It's simple as hell on its face. But to master it is very, very time-consuming in a sense of everybody has their own intricacies of how they control. Everybody's got their own moves. Um <sighs> What's so great about it is that the Fire Pro system replicates literally every type of wrestling, from high flyers to strong style to they even usually have MMA UFC fighters in there. And all of them are replicated exactly down to their most minor detail. The artificial intelligence of Fire Pro is far beyond any other wrestling game ever. The guys control as they do in real life. If you have a match, uh, if you try to put Hulk Hogan versus Boss Rutten, right, you're going to have a hell of a match because you're not going to be able to Irish whip Boss. You're not going to be able to, you know, he's not going to stand still and let you do body slams and power bombs and shit to him. Um, you know, some matches like that, I've had matches where, I would be a wrestler versus a UFC guy, and the match will end in 10 seconds. They'll just hook me in an arm bar, break my arm, and the match is over. Um, or they nail, like, one of those uh, critical strikes. Oh, yeah. I've had uh, people friggin' insecure me and knock me out in five seconds. Um, but it's so rewarding because not only is everybody in the world pretty much in it, but, like, most fire pros, they have a mixture of real people. And uh, real people under fake names, like you, you, Hogan's usually in all of them, but they usually call him Axe Duggan. Uh, but you can usually go in and tweak their names and their outfits and make them look like they're real people. This has been standard from the beginning. I'm actually overjoyed that they have so many uh, real people in it this time around because usually they can't do that for licensing reasons. But I guess they threw a little bit of money around to get guys like Omega officially licensed. But, oh, man. Uh, yeah, because this was back in the uh, Bullet Club days, so they actually got, like, the entire New Japan sanction uh, pretty much in there. Like, all the factions uh, from New Japan from that year are in there. And, and did you know, because everybody knows pro wrestling on NES, but did you know that the guy who developed pro wrestling on the NES was one of the guys who created Fire Pro? That I did not know. The only thing that I... The only oddball fact I knew about Fire Pro was the director, Suda51, who did, like, No More Heroes and weird, obscure games like that, actually directed one of the Fire Pros uh, on the Super NES. In the original NES Pro Wrestling, I forget which gentleman, but because I'm bad with the names and I don't have it in front of me right this second, but he went on to be one of the creators of Fire Pro. And if you go back and play Pro Wrestling you immediately see it because the controls are similar. The uh, perspective is different because Fire Pro has that top-down isometric perspective, but the controls are the same, whereas you walk up to somebody to lock up and you press up, down, left, or right, plus B to do a move. So it, it, you can really see where Fire Pro grew out of that system. Uh, Mark, you definitely, there's a lot of different Fire Pro games you can play across many systems there's literally like 50 of these games i might be exaggerating a little bit but um they started making them on the super famicom and i got my list here yeah super fire pro queen special fire pro 2 3 final bow easy type special super fire pro x x premium and then they were also out for the Saturn was uh, the Saturn was the one that first really caught on in America because uh, a lot of Saturn guys were uh, really big importers because a lot of the best games only came out in Japan. So uh, Fire Pro S Six Men Scramble was the first Fire Pro that caught on in America, even though it was not released here. But I remember reading about that, and it blew my mind because. That came out in the late 90s when we were used to a wrestling game having like 15, 20 people at most. I'm reading about this Japanese game where there's 200 people 
and you could make like 200 more people. Wait, wait a second. What? We didn't even have creator wrestler yet over here. It was the first wrestling game to have a creator wrestler and programmable artificial intelligence. That was the first game where you couldn't just give somebody moves, but you could go into the computer and program how often do they do strikes? How often do they pose? How often, if ever, do they go to the top rope? How often do they use weapons? When they bleed, do they get angry or do they get panicky? Things like that. And they've since been adopted by other systems, but FirePro instigated all of that. And like I said, they were using real guys, just tweaking the names. They had Hogan and Rob Van Dam and The Undertaker and Sting. So uh, it blew my uh, freaking mind. Ric Flair, because he was, the, uh, he was the villain in one of the ones that never got released here, but he had a really screwed up name. I think his name was like Dick Slender or something like that. And, and isn't that the Fire Pro game where he actually is like in the story mode? He's like the evil mastermind genius, and then after the, the protagonist wins the game, he kills himself? <laughs> is that, that what I'm is thinking of? the exact one. Um, he kills your coach, he kills your tag team partner in the ring, um, and yeah, after you win the title, like you have no one left to celebrate with, so the guy just goes home and he kills himself. And I'm like, he goes home and shoots himself. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, there's like the the funny part about it the DLC pack I just downloaded it like maybe a month or two ago is the sequel to that and you're playing as that guy's son. Oh wow, that's cool. I so, remember. So like you find out there's more to it as like the storyline progresses. It wasn't just a oh I'm sad and I'm doing this. There was something more to it. Oh man, I, I love Fire Pro. I first the first one I got to play was Fire Pro Advance on the Game Boy Advance. So it was two. I don't know if you ever if you played either of those. They were kind of like a little bit dumbed down. I think you'd only make fifty people instead of like two hundred. But oh god. <laughs> uh, but those were good. I think the first one was a little bit better. They got in trouble because in the first Fire Pro Advance, they actually put in the octagon. And, like, it had the UFC, a very similar logo on the canvas to the UFC. So they kind of complained. So they had to take that out for Fire Pro 2. Um, yeah, I remember that. Um, they Now it's called the, the Federation's called, like, the SWF in the ring. They have one ring that looks like, you know, a regular rectangle, like, almost like a cage from, like, a cage match with no mat in it. And then the other one is just, like... It's a weird shape, but it's not exactly an octagon. <laughs> it's like whatever. I think it's got like 12 sides or something. Yeah, that's it. Now, do they, in the newest one, do they still have the bear? Because in some uh, of the Fire Pros, they have the wrestling bear. You can wrestle a bear. No, they don't have the bear in the roster, but they give you like the parts to build him. That's awesome. In in friggin' in at least I can't remember which one off the top of my head, but in at least one of the Fire Pro Advance games for Game Boy Advance, the final boss is the fucking bear. And the bear will fuck you up. <laughs> Sometimes you just lose like in ten seconds because he just mauls you to death. <laughs> it's a fucking bear. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Here's a here's a wrestling game that uh is technically wrestling, but it's like not, you know, WWE or, or anything the real world. Have any of you guys ever played Rumble Roses? Yes, I do remember and I rented Rumble Roses. It was like a all female wrestling game. Yeah. Yep, I do remember that. That was like the only game that I only wrestling game I wrestling game I even remember my girlfriend playing. Um and she had brought it up like a while back and I was like, oh, let me give it a try. You know, so I gave it a second glance again from when I was younger, and it was actually kind of solid. It wasn't that bad. It took us a while to get used to. I, I remember that um, I was browsing to the Xbox 360, and that game was on sale for, like, I don't know, five bucks or some shit. So we're like, yeah, why not? So we downloaded it and everything. My brother and I played it. We were, like, unprepared because it just felt like the game just, like, threw you into the match, and we, you know, didn't know any of the controls or whatever the fuck and, and I don't know that that intro that intro is like like 
Like, I can play Dead or Alive, but the way Rumble Roses looks like, dude, I feel embarrassed to, like, have friends come over. Well, what are you playing there, Mark? Oh, nothing, nothing. I, I'm, I'm playing Street Fighter. Rumble Roses, could, they were okay. They, uh... This, the first one was a good first try, but then the second one didn't really add that much new. It was still essentially the same game. They just added more of the uh, the cheesecake stuff. Like, if you win, you get to do a short cutscene of tickling the girl or, or making her pose in an embarrassing costume. But, uh, what? What? It, it just it, the the gameplay is what needed the work. I don't even think there was a real story mode for the second one. I, I have both the Rumble Roses. I I liked them. I, I I am not shy about you know being a big fan of cheesecake stuff. So I was like, okay. I thought the engine was good. I just thought it, it could have been more than it was, and they didn't really follow through on it like they should have. I would have liked to have seen more. Not just for the obvious reasons, but I, I guess the second one didn't sell or they would have made more of them. I thought they had good characters, though. Like, I, I was intrigued by the characters. And I liked that it was a little bit more cartoonish and comic book. Like, one thing right now that's missing, I think, from the wrestling game genre, and we talked about this when we talked about the AEW games, is there's no competition anymore. Like, you're lucky you get one game a year, maybe two. But... God, I'm looking at these lists of wrestling games, and it's like back in the 90s, you used to get, like, some of them might have only come out in Japan, but, you know, there was a lot more variety. Now, it's, there's nothing. I, I Like, when Rumble Roses came out, I was like, well, this could be something new and different and fun, and then they just they stopped doing it right away. I was like, eh. Like, I just want more wrestling games. Oh, yeah, highly understandable. I mean, like, that game had a great deal of potential, and I just, they it, it just shot it dead flat. I just, I don't even understand why. I mean, obviously, in today's society, it'd be, you know, you couldn't even release it now. People would throw a fit. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, look, look at all the flag Dead or Life 6 got. But I think, you know, they had interesting characters. Like, the story was cheesy as hell, but, I mean, it was, a, you know, basically a cartoon. Like, anybody who's ever watched, like, uh, any of the, the animes centered around wrestling, you know, it was in the same vein. I mean, anything you get from Japan is going to be a little over the top. Uh, but I thought it was interesting because with the WWF games, I do prefer, when it comes to wrestling games, I'm more of a sim type of guy. I'm not huge on the arcade style of wrestling games. I like things to be a little more real, but I also want more than just one thing. So if you have a game coming out like 2K or whatever that's more sim-based, I don't mind if there's something like Battlegrounds out at the same time that's more arcade-y. I just don't want it to have to be only one or the other at any given time. The Rumble Roses was a pretty good arcade-style wrestling game, but I felt like they didn't really go as far with it as they could have. I liked that everybody had a heel and babyface persona and that you'd flip depending on how you worked your matches. I thought that was cool. Um, I thought a lot of the finishers were really good. Since it's not real, you know, you could have stuff that's totally unrealistic and not plausible. Um, I would have liked them to do more. It's just, I guess... I, they probably get so much heat because of the premise of how it was presented with the, you know, the camera zooming in in certain spots. Uh, I guess they just felt like it wasn't worth all the aggravation, but, yeah. Yeah, you know what happened with uh, WWE Battlegrounds is that the last 2K whatever year it was, 2K whatever, 20? I don't know. Uh, it was such a fucking 2K. bomb. Yeah, which one? Yeah, it was a 2K20, like. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was such a fucking bomb, and it was, like, horrible and untested and bugs and shit. They decided to, like, take a break from it. That's when they went to Battlegrounds round this year. I mean, it's kind of fun. I still gotta learn how to play it, though. They got some power-ups and shit, but I don't, like, know. I'm not that... I'm trying to figure out which buttons do them and whatever. I mean, that's the kind of game... I wanted to check it out. I, I was hoping it, it was a little more, you know, just jump in. But I kind of need, like a, like a like, a buddy... To figure out the controls for me and tell me what to do and whatever, because I don't know how to activate the power up items and junk just yet. 
See, now that goes back to, you know, what we were talking about a little bit with Fire Pro, is how some games are really good, or even beyond that, we were talking about the Tecmo World Wrestling. Some of the wrestling games that have been made are really good, but you have to know how to play them. Like, you know, with the Fire Pro question earlier, I think you should definitely play it, but you're going to take some time learning it, because that game is going to kick your ass the first bunch of times. You just got to be ready for that. But... There's other games, like, I think the reason why people gravitate so strongly to the N64 ones is that they're so easy to just jump right in and pick up and play. Whether you haven't played them in 10 years or whatever, if you plug in WrestleMania 2000 or No Mercy or or even the WCW ones for N64, oh, man, it's, like, so smooth and just so easy to do anything you want to do. You know, and... uh, I really think that's why they've endured so much. I don't necessarily agree with people who say they're the best ever. Um, There's definitely improvements could have been made. And I do feel like some of the things people like about those games have since been applied to a point in other series. Like the Day of Reckoning games for GameCube, those were pretty much the No Mercy engine just sped up a little bit. Um and then the grapple system, they pretty much married the grappling system from No Mercy to the SmackDown engine for the last, like, eight or so, or the last five or so of the uh, WWE games that came out. So, you know, it's not that those elements aren't in there. So when people say, oh, we need to go back to the No Mercy style, I kind of feel like it's still in a lot of those games. It's just not maybe as pronounced and maybe not as easy to pick up, but I know for me, that was a big appeal to me back in those days, the N64 games, was just pick them up, you could get good at them in 10 seconds, and you were off to the races. Well, there was another game like that, it was kind of cartoony, like, as far as, like, the design went, uh, it was slightly cartoony, had that same No Mercy, the exact, like, No Mercy Aki setup, but um, didn't really have any wrestlers in it, but it was uh, Def Jam Vendetta. That was Yeah. Cool. I didn't play it, but I heard about it. I heard that it pretty much ripped off the uh, No Mercy engine. Uh, it did. Um, the finishers were like these insane super moves. Like, if you ever get a chance, even if you don't play it, just like go on YouTube and just look at the finishers and you'll just, like your jaw's going to drop. Because it was the same. Uh, it was the Aki Systems guys mixed with the same crew that did, like, the SSX snowboarding games. So it was just so over the top, but it was so much fun. Now, Mark, I think you said you didn't really play a lot of the N64 games. Did I hear that correct? Yeah, I didn't have access to any of those. Those um, those consoles slipped me by. I was playing PS1 and 2 while everyone else was playing those. Have you, have you still haven't played them? Is that... Yeah, I, I have never... I don't wow. think I've... I've played a GameCube once because an X had it, but not wrestling, though. And I don't think I've ever seen an N64, like, in person. Dude, okay, because this is the thing. I mean, a million people who are fans of wrestling games right now are going to think you're crazy when they hear that. I mean, you have to play. I can give you the list of the four games you have to play at some point. You have to play. Oh, sorry, go ahead. But but here's the question, though. Because most of these games that I, I've heard of, they were still made during that era when all the three D graphics was still pretty new and and everyone looks like blocky as shit. Like doesn't like the, the games doesn't matter, <laughs> doesn't fucking matter. They are the most fun out of any wrestling game probably ever made. You've got to play in order because they get better as they go along. But they're all really good. I could even double down and give you six games. But the four that you're going to get the easiest, WCW NWO World Tour. Yes! W- that was the first N64 one that was the sequel to WCW vs. the World on PlayStation, which is another game we need to get, and we need to talk about that before we're done. But then they had WCW vs. NWO Revenge, which was like a perfected version of, of World Tour. Then THQ jumped to the WWF, and they did WrestleMania 2000, And then they did No Mercy, which is considered the cream of the crop. Okay, those are the big four. But I'll even go further than that. And there's Virtual Pro Wrestling, which was Japanese. 
and the sequel, Virtual Pro 2, Odo Keshu. I probably butchered that. But that is AJ Styles' favorite wrestling game of all time. And that's the one I've been playing the most recently. And that one is pretty much like the Japanese version of WrestleMania 2000. Um, they're, believe it or not, the Japanese ones are even a lot different from the uh, American ones. Ninja, have you played the Japanese ones? Uh, negative. I have not. Other than uh, oh my god. So okay. they were also different. They were a lot different. Like okay, you played um, WCW uh, NWO World Tour, correct? Yeah. So, Virtual Pro, the first one, is basically that game, but with a much bigger roster of all real-life Japanese people, and it's got uh, more of the UFC and MMA-type people in it. Good game, but then Virtual Pro 2 is almost like two games in one. <laughs> The layout is almost identical to uh, WrestleMania 2000, right down to the menu screen. I can't read Japanese. I, I don't know a word of it. I can't understand what's on the screen. I usually have to have a guide when I play these games. But Virtual Pro 2, the menu, is identical to WrestleMania 2000. So if, you're, if you played WrestleMania 2000, you can kind of eyeball the menu. It's like, okay, so that's where Exhibition is. That's where Career Mode is, whatever. Yeah, but how much the N64 even cost nowadays? I got the I have game. an extra one. There you go. <laughs> I have two. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna deprive you of a, of a 64. Like but the thing is, I went to a retro gaming store and bought it in 64 because it was like the 20th anniversary of Ocarina of Time, and I just wanted to see check out my old cart, and I finally found my old N64, which I thought my parents had gotten rid of with me, you know, after I moved from home. And I found it again, so I have two N64s. How much How much did it cost you at the retro store? I have no idea. I can't remember now. It was like, not too bad. Some, it wasn't much, you know? So. And the games, the, the WWF and WCW N64 games, you could probably find for like five to ten bucks each. Yeah, I've seen them. Games I've, I've, I've like seen, uh... I got like 20 bucks. I, I gotta see what happened, because there was a, uh... Not a retro game store. It was like a one of those giant ass indoor flea market type stores. But amongst the stores, there was one that had video games. And I've seen NWO versus uh, whatever the one that has Hogan and Goldberg yelling at each other undercover. And uh, wait, that's that's the wait wait that's which revenge. one was that? Yeah, revenge. It was the second one. Yeah, I've seen that one all over the place, but I don't know if it's still there because they renamed the place, so I don't know. If it's a whole new store altogether, or just the same old store under a new name, because my town does that a lot. There's a lot of places that are quote unquote shut down, but then they just get like renamed, and you when you go inside, it's like this exact same store. You know what I mean? So I, I have to I have to go one of these days to see if it's still there. But if not, we still got the other retro game store. I gotta see. Any wrestling fan who has not played those specific games and they're a video game fan is is insane like okay graphics this and that whatever it's not even the point um it's they're just the feel of the gameplay is so tight and virtual pro 2 is actually two games in one in a sense because hidden in the menu is a full-fledged mma game they have people in it like boss wooten and mark Kerr and uh ricks and gracie and a whole bunch of real life mma fighters but if you go into the rules menu, you can flip the rules for a match from pro wrestling to MMA, and you're, you'll have a 15-round, three-minute round match where takedowns earn your points and knockdowns earn your points, and you can win with knockouts and submissions. Uh, the grappling system is totally different for MMA fighters versus the wrestlers. Like, they'll only have a couple grapples, but they'll be able to do strike combos and ground and pounds and uh, it's amazing like when i found that in the menu it was like unbelievable i'm doing a round robin tournament right now with uh like i got a bunch of wrestlers mm and mma guys in it like i made ken shamrock and he's pretty unstoppable uh it's it's a lot of fun i'm surprised they had enough space on the cart to even put that on there 
It's probably like something to try like on like a like the PlayStation or something like that. With all the info on there. The thing is, what they did do, because it's a straight Japanese wrestling game, is they took out some of the features that are common to the American games that wouldn't have any place in Japan. For example, the engine is the same as the WrestleMania 2000 engine. However, in Japan, they don't do ladder matches. They don't do steel cage matches. They don't do hardcore matches. So all that stuff was pretty much taken out. So that probably freed up a lot of the memory. Uh, but the creator wrestler is fantastic. There are hundreds and hundreds of moves to pick from. I mean, there's reasons, Mark, why people gravitate back towards these N64 games and they'll say, ah, fuck SmackDown or fuck WWE 2K, whatever. Those games suck. And they'll go back to these games from 23, 24 years ago. Wow. They're so much fun. They're so much fun. The game, like I said, I've been playing Virtual Pro 2 most recently. I did have to, um, I did have to mod my N64 to play import games though. But it's real easy. You just, you need this special screwdriver, right? You just open up the console and you take out the dust flaps because the cartridges are shaped just a tiny little bit differently. So uh, all you do, you just pop the case open, take out the flaps, put the case back together, and it's fine. So. Uh, so it's good. I have- Sort of similar to like with the SNES situation, you just gotta, you know, clip the little the clips on the side just so you can, um, so you can put in a Japanese card into it so it can fit. Yeah, just because they shifted the uh, spot where the the tabs on the back are. There's these two little grooves on the back of a Japanese tab, and they're closer inward, whereas American cartridges they're all the way out on the back side corners, so. But again, it's it's a two second mod. Uh, I I did it with a. I just had to order the screwdriver. The screwdriver is like five bucks because it's a special type of head. But you pop the case, you take out the dust flaps, put the case back on, you're good to go. I only have four N64 import games, but I love them all. And the other two were actually they came. They're not as good as Virtual Pro, but they're uh, from a series called Tokan Retsuden. And that's also it's it's good. They're not as smooth. It's it's not the same engine. They came they came out a little bit later than the uh, the Virtual Pro games. But hmm. I mean, oh god! I mean, the roster alone though: Andre the Giant, Antonio Inoki, Great Muda, Jushin Thunder Liger, Big Van Vader. Um, oh god! I could go on and on and on. You got to check those games out, man. Yeah, I'll have to be on the lookout for him. There's your and Ninja, you too. There's your homework since you didn't play the Japanese ones yet. <laughs> Got them for like twenty bucks each. Twenty bucks each, man. And the two hey, Conrad Suden ones. Cool. The two Conrad Suden ones are also really good. They're just not as good. They they don't play the same, but definitely uh, worth checking out. There's two of those: uh, Brave Spirits and Next Generation. They're called so. Yeah, four import N64 wrestling games to track down. All cheap and a lot of fun to play. And we got to find Mark in N64 because he's failing now. He's so <laughs> far behind. Oh, man. But... Ahem, yes, you need an N64. Uh-huh. I am willing to help with that. Well, how about... There's definitely a lot of good games for that little system that people just... Everybody jumped to PlayStation 1. But if you were a wrestling game fan and you only had a PlayStation 1, you were a fucking sucker. Because it was only one good game for that fucking system, and it was WCW vs. Versus the, uh, versus the World. It was the only good wrestling game. Yeah, because it sure wasn't Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk briefly about that. Now, Ninja, you brought it up first, WCW vs. The World. Yep. So, let's talk about that a little bit. Like, how did you discover that game? Because that game flew so far under the radar when it came out that I didn't even know it had come out until a friend showed it to me. Um, the way I discovered it, uh, ended up renting it from Blockbuster, and uh, I ended up uh, so I played it for a couple of days. I enjoyed the heck out of it. I turned around and I bought it. But um, the one thing that uh, actually made me keep it was actually a weird setup to where, like, you could change the costumes of the wrestlers. And uh, when you pick Sting, oddly enough, he had, like, this, you know, weird black and white face paint and 
you know, this all black gear. And this was before, like months before he had even started on the pro gimmick. Well, he hadn't really wrestled under the crow gimmick yet, but he had uh, he'd started showing up wearing it in the crowd and stuff, but he didn't wrestle like that yet. He actually hadn't wrestled for about a year when that game came out. But yeah, that so was... when that came out, like I, I had never even seen it before, and I was like, what is this? And, of course, you know, it had, like, Great Muda, it had um, Juice and Thunder Liger, you know, so once I saw that, that really got me hooked, and, like, the system was so was so like easy to pick up and play till it was just like it was a no-brainer for me. now mark did you ever play that one wcw versus the world no i've heard of it but i was curious though the whole versus the world did it have a bunch of like was it a mixture between legit wcw guys but also a bunch of like made up people to represent the world or something or it was you had about 12 wcw guys and then everybody else was real wrestlers from around the world but they were given fake names for licensing issues ah. they couldn't, couldn't mark it but i mean you could tell who they were uh great muda looked exactly like great muda they just called him black belt uh nah. scott norton was uh billy gajian but it was clearly scott norton uh stan hansen was the count uh and so on and so on in some cases they didn't even really disguise them they looked exactly like who they were they just had fake names yeah, like, Jushin Thunder Liger was exactly who he was. Um, but it was weird, though, because Rey Mysterio, when you go to when you go to hover over him, it didn't have a name at first. It just had a bunch of question marks. Actually, it's not Rey Mysterio, believe it or not. It was uh, That was actually the unknown. A lot of people assumed it was supposed to be Rey Mysterio. It was actually based on Super Delphin. Oh, see, now that part I didn't know. That makes a lot more sense. That that game also came out first in Japan under a different name. Um, I think it was also a Virtual Pro, but not the Virtual Pro that gravitated to the N64. Because, again, you, you can see when you play them a very clear link from the PS1 WCW vs. The World. The N64 engine kind of modified and perfected. What I that see the, the funny part was that... When I heard about WCW versus the World, like I guess you know they did they didn't do their homework or whatever. But I remember like video game magazines at the time were talking about how they were wondering like you know like like what was the point of having you know so and so WW WCW guys or, or you know WCW guys and having a bunch of like made ups like just taking up roster spaces. But I guess that kind of shows that they don't do their research i forgot if it was either game pro or, or egm but one of them like completely missed it so that's why i was asking you guys because i was thinking well what if what if these guys were real guys but there were people from japan or something that we're not familiar with it was the same with the uh, n64 games because it was all part of at the time wcw and new japan had a working agreement and as part of that working agreement when New Japan would have their wrestling games come out in Japan, they would include WCW people. And since it, they were licensed, they didn't have to change the names. However, it was a one-sided agreement, so when those games came out over here, THQ didn't have the rights to Great Muda and Scott Norton, so they had to change everybody's name for America. But if you get the Japanese versions, everybody is exactly who they are. Hulk Hogan's Hulk Hogan. Uh, Muda is Muda. This game, you really have to consider the timing of where wrestling games were. At that time, this would have been 97 when this game came out for PS1. I got a PS1 for this game specifically. I didn't even care about PlayStation until I saw this game. My buddy showed it to me. The last wrestling game of any kind we had received was WWF in your house. Does anybody remember that piece of shit? It looks stupid. Can we, can we, can we just not talk about that? <laughs> yeah, we don't have to talk about it. We don't have to. But I'm slightly that. curious how bad that is, but never mind, because that's traumatizing. I don't want you to relive it. Well, I mean, before that, it was technically the sequel, in a sense, to WrestleMania the Arcade, which wasn't that bad. But that's what again, it looked like. When I saw the commercials for it in the magazines, it kind of looked like a over-exaggerated version of WWF the arcade game. 
it was one of those Mortal Kombat style quote unquote wrestling games. Yeah. Just not as not as good as WrestleMania the arcade. Everything about it was worse. So before that, the last wrestling game we had was WWF Raw, which would have been in ninety uh, late ninety four, early ninety five. The last WCW game we had was for Super Nintendo called Super Brawl, which is a game most people to this day haven't heard of. It's okay. Uh, it's it's worth checking out, but it's got a learning curve to it. So, all of a sudden, with no fanfare, no buzz, no build-up, all of a sudden this WCW game for PlayStation comes out. I don't know why they didn't market the hell out of this game. I'm at my buddy's house. He's like, did you play the WCW game? I says, what, Super Brawl for Super Nintendo? I rented it last week. It's okay. He's like, no, no, for PlayStation. There's a new WCW game. I'm like, are you kidding me? He shows me this game. There's like 60 people in the game. Now, every wrestling game we ever played had 10 people. Everybody had two costumes, which was in and of itself brand new. Because in, you know, Raw and Royal Rumble, you know, guys had their one outfit, and that was it. Yeah, that's true. Everybody, every character in the game had, like, f I think it was 40 unique moves. Whereas Royal Rumble, you had five moves. Raw for Super Nintendo, you had five moves. You had a body slam, a suplex, a headbutt, a different suplex, an atomic drop. And that was it. And your finisher. Now, I'm playing this PlayStation game where, yeah, the guys look like they're put together out of Legos or whatever, but the characters are two-thirds the size of the screen. And they have their exact real life move sets. And there's reversals and grapples and finishers and knockouts and oh my god. I like it was one of those things where I had to be the jerk guest in my buddy's house because once I started playing this game I didn't want to give the controller back. To <laughs> I got him and I asked my sister, she says, What do you want for your birthday? And, uh, you know, I said, if it's not too, you know, it, as she had money at the time. I was like, you know, if it's not too much trouble, I'd like a PlayStation, and I'd love this game. And I ended up getting it, and I was up morning, noon, and night for the next week unlocking all the people. Jeff Jarrett was in it. Andre the Giant's in it, too, but for America, they switched it to The Giant, which was weird because his portrait is The Giant. But then when you play the game, it's clearly Andre. He's got the big afro and everything. It's just weird. <laughs> it's funny if they just call him like like El Gigante or some shit like that, or or whatever the Japanese word for the giant. What what is the Japanese word for the giant, Jupy? Yeah, you mean like just really big? Yeah, but I mean, what's the actual word for like the giant and and uh? You mean like? I don't know what the wrestlers. I don't know what, from a wrestler perspective as a name. No, the actual literal, the literal me. word, the literal word, the giant. What would that be? Okina. Yeah, yeah, it would be funny if it was just called Okina, and then you play him, and it's like Andre. That game. Okina much... Andre. <laughs> that was the game. I don't think people talk about it enough because, and I think Ninja will agree with me on this. The N64 games evolved what that game did. Holy fucking what? shit, the game's like $89. Ow. Really? Oh, I found a copy. Oh, no. Wait. No, but you said WCW Nitro sucks, right? Yeah. What about WCW uh, Mayhem? It's okay. It was a good first try. Which one did you say was like 89 bucks? Uh, versus the World on Amazon, at least. Nah, that's not. Nah, it's, it's on eBay for uh, $11. Wow, okay. Okay, here's one for $8. Yeah. But like, but how how well do you trust eBay, though? Like, I don't know why. eBay always gives you that, that like, I want to get ripped off, you know? Uh, I recently bought, for myself and for my girl, I've been uh, going crazy on eBay getting stuff lately, uh... It's it's definitely fine. I've gotten s stuff from all over the world on eBay. I don't know what problems you've had in the past, but just none. It's uh, just it just always looks more shady to me than like, like Amazon always looks more like a like legit mini stores, while eBay literally looks like a random fat dude selling shit out of their garage. You know what I mean? Let's put it to you like this: 
if you're if you're looking to buy a video game that's 25 years old, you know, regardless of how professional Amazon looks versus eBay, if Amazon's asking 80 bucks for this 25 year old game, and eBay is asking eight dollars for this 25 year old game, I mean, use your head, brother. Okay. Uh, I've I've literally like I'm looking a bunch of stuff that I picked up for me and her. I, I recently ordered like ugh, like forty different things off of eBay the last couple of weeks. Point of fact, actually, I just bought a uh, American translated copy of Super Back to the Future Two for Super Nintendo. It's a repro cart because that game didn't come out over here. It originally, only came out in Japan, but. I paid a guy who was selling a translated reproduction cartridge, complete with case. Uh, cost me about forty bucks. It's perfect. It plays like a dream. That's cool. And it's a shame that that game did not come out here, given that the other game was so sucky for us. I and it's a good game too. I, it's only it takes you like an hour to beat it. It's not really that big of a game, but it's it's fun. It's it's beautiful. It plays great. It's like as far as movie based platformers go, it was one of the better ones I played and. I don't know why it was only in Japan, other than the art style is very distinctly Japanese. So maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, you know, I love when you're fighting Griff and he's got the head is like three times the size of his body and he's swinging the baseball bats around. It's great, but yeah, I, I thought that was a really good game. Yeah, Mark, uh, I'm telling you, man, I'm on the old eBay right now and I'm looking. Uh, I, my recent copy that I bought, somebody stole my first copy of WCW vs. the World. The copy I have now, I bought originally at GameStop for $4. I found one for $2 right now. Jeez. Yeah, it, that's, they, that's they, good they made so many copies of this game that like people were using it as a coaster. Jeez. Uh, oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay more than fifteen, but you can get it for under ten. But I mean, it's it's a piece of history. Uh, a ninja, I'm sure, will agree with me that what it did was sort of uh, it, it broke the ground that the N64 games built on and perfected. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. It was basically the blueprint for most of the uh, N64 based wrestling games. Like it introduced the grappling to wrestling games before that it was very arcadey i i love raw and royal rumble but it was a very arcade kind of style where it was so like button mashy like you lock up and you just mash that button and whoever hit the button harder got the move but with those games the grapple became the way and the timing became the way you won matches and uh, all of a sudden overnight it changed everything to the point where you know when warzone came out I remember getting a little bit excited for Warzone, but then I played it, and it was like, this just isn't as good. It just didn't feel right after playing WCW vs. the World and then uh, World Tour, and, and you know, the, the, the way those controls were just felt so much more right, whereas... Warzone and Attitude, they still had those Mortal Kombat controls, you know what I mean? Where it was like left, right, up, down, square, and that's a body slam. Like, who needs that shit? Yeah, like, you basically had to put in, like, a fatality just to do a brain buster. And those games were okay. I don't know, Mark, you ever play any of those at any point? Almost did, but it didn't happen. <laughs> I still play them once. Here's a while. funny thing. Here's a funny thing. I was looking at uh, because you know how nowadays, uh, GameStop sometimes sells like old, you know, SNES and whatever else, you know, games. So I found I found WWF the arcade game for like I don't know six bucks, seven bucks, some shit like that. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'll buy it, and that'll be my next episode, you know, to review it or whatever. And because even if it sucked balls, it's like five bucks, you know. And I get the game, and it doesn't work. And after trying it a couple of times, I didn't notice it was the PAL version. Oh. And I was like, the fucking hell, what? You know. So I gave it back to the store, and I didn't know if they were going to give me give it back to me or not, because technically speaking, I bought it online and not at the store, so I don't know if they were going to give me a hassle. But no, they just took it and... Nothing else costs five bucks. I bought myself a Financial Freddy's Funko Pop or whatever, and that's it. But, but yeah, that was. 
I didn't want a chance buying buying it like a second time, but like yeah, I was ready to play it and you know insult it and stuff and. I know it was kind of like those that Mortal Kombat type playing. You got like Undertaker fucking doing electricity and shit, and you know exaggerated <laughs> stuff based on their gimmicks. I think that was like I think Razor, uh, his hands literally turns into into blades and shit like that. But I never actually got oh, to play it. Same game. Yeah, WrestleMania Arcade. It, it's okay. But the thing I, is, it only had it only had a few wrestlers, and from what I understand. Like, it's bad enough the game only had, like, about ten or so guys. Then, like, the Genesis version took off, like, two more guys. Like, what the fuck? Like, why is it even worth buying the Genesis version with only eight guys or whatever? Like, the, the PS1 is the version of that game to get, um, even though the load times are pretty crummy. When yeah, I'd imagine. The Battle Royal at the end. But, but, but that's the, is that still the arcade one, or is that, like, the in-your-house yeah. one? No, in Your House also came out for PS1, but WrestleMania Arcade, that game got ported to every system. That game came out for Super Nintendo, Genesis, PS1, Sega CD, Saturn, and I think it came out for a couple home computers as well. Uh, but the PS1 version of WrestleMania Arcade is definitely the one to get. It's got the full roster. Uh, it's the closest to the arcade. Yeah, I'd imagine so. The problem so. is that the main event match is a battle royal, and every time a new guy comes out, there's like a five to ten second load. <laughs> oh, load, no. Load, load, load. So, I mean, you know, did, did the PS version had any characters that even the SNES version skipped out on? or? Well, I think the Super Nintendo one took somebody out also. I think they took out Bigelow. Damn. I guess it... The, they all had cuts except for the the Saturn and the PS1 versions. Those were the two versions that were really close to the arcade. But the PS1 is just a little bit better. The load time on the Saturn was worse. And uh, it's also become, like all Saturn games, ridiculously expensive. So what, so what happened to... Uh, games. Saturn what happened? port games are cheap. So how did they fuck it up with the in-your-house version then? Like, how did they make it even worse or... Well, it was a different development studio made it. It wasn't the same people, and it just kind of, you know, was made for less money. And the fact that it wasn't put out in arcades meant that uh, the presentation was suffering a little bit. Uh, it wasn't going to look as good. and it, I don't know. In Your House is just... It was an interesting idea. Like, they really thought at that point that, uh, that these Mortal Kombat-style wrestling games were going to be the future. And, like I said, that's why... I, I checked it out when it came out. I didn't buy it at the time. I bought it later on for $3. That's all it was worth. Have you ever uh, played uh, Batman Forever? Yeah. It was same... I, I, like, I don't know why, but that same Mortal Kombat gameplay, Mortal Kombat physics, everybody was a, like an actor or whatever... It was it was, it was awful. awful. It was it terrible. Was I remember when we had that game. We thought we were going to be like, so cool. Like, okay, we like Mortal Kombat, but it does not belong in a Batman setting. It was, it like was a actually clean. the same guys. It was um actually uh, Ed Boon and Tobias that actually made that Batman game and the uh, WWE game as well. Oh, no. Yeah. And, and, and to the point of fact, uh, one of... This is rumor. This has never been officially confirmed, but it was rumor that one of the Mortal Kombats, either, either 4 or one of the many versions of Part 3, but because there was all this crossover stuff going on, that Shawn Michaels was actually going to be a hidden character in one of those Mortal Kombats, but it didn't happen. But there's code in the game, and I'd have to look up which game it is. But It was actually it, uh, Mortal Kombat 2. Um, it's... Was it? Okay. Yeah, if you go through the uh, BIOS check, especially on the arcade version, if you go through the BIOS check, it says uh, there's different uh, little codings, and then there's one that literally just says Sean Kicks, and it's spelled the same way Shawn Michaels spells his name. If and you do the a further w data mine, the WWF logo is in there. I was going to say the WWF logo is in the code. So, it, yeah, it's weird. It was like a claim, really, at that time, only knew how to make one kind of game. And they had that Mortal Kombat set it up that they would use in everything. I found it for uh, 20 bucks on eBay. Which one? 
uh, the WWE um, FRK game? Yeah, I mean, it's a nice collective piece. It's just, you know, it's not my kind of wrestling game. But like I said, that's why when WCW vs. The World came out, you go from WrestleMania the arcade game to this, and this is a real wrestling game. And you have 50 people and real wrestling moves, and it's not Mortal Kombat. It's actually pro wrestling. Now, now how... It's never been made to wrestling. It was mind-blowing. Now, now, before I commit and spend like $4 that I'll probably never get back in my life, that I'll always blame you for the rest of my life and your life, uh... How how easy of a pick? Hey, four dollars is four dollars, yo, in today's economy, you know. Anyways, uh, the how how uh how like pick up and play is uh WCW versus the world. Easy, it takes you ten minutes tops to master it. But what's cool is that everybody controls differently. So I had so much fun after I mastered it with Hogan, of course. I, I just played the game with every single character, learning everybody's moves, everybody's nuances, because it was so fun and easy to play. There's little intricate things to it, little idiosyncrasies, like you do different strikes based on how far away you are from the guy. Like if you're medium length away, you'll do a kick, but if you're closer, you'll do a punch. Hmm. Um when when you're getting up off the mat, if you hold square down, you'll stay crouched, and that's a bit of strategy because usually the opponent will try to attack you as you're getting up. But if you hold crouched, they'll like miss a drop kick or something, and then when they get up, you can just go right to hammering them. Um, oh, and if you're using Ric Flair on that one, I learned if you hit the attack button while you're still while you're still crouched, you do the crouch punch. Yep. And, like, the reversal system is a little weird because you have to hit X and square at the same time. The timing of the reversals is a little bit tricky because, like, if you have to know the timing of your opponent's moves. So, like, if Ric Flair throws a chop, you have to know at what point during his chop animation to mash X and square and you'll catch his arm and do a reversal. You'll do, like, an arm bar or something like that. Um... This was still made, I think, pre um, pre NWO, right? That was like the last game before the NWO actually started coming in and doing shit, right? They had just started, so the only NWO representation in that game is that Hogan's default outfit is his NWO outfit, and Chono's hmm. secondary outfit is him wearing the NWO shirt. Other than that, there's no NWO stuff in it there's also no tag team matches which is kind of a bummer but again it's it's very bare bones it's just a fun simple wrestling game that for 1997 was by far the closest to wrestling that any video game had ever gotten it's a nice little time capsule it's been surpassed there's better games now but again to play it in the mindset of 1997 to go from in your house and WrestleMania Arcade to this game where, I mean, so many firsts. First wrestling game with Chris Benoit. First wrestling game to have the NWO. First wrestling game to have more than 10 pe people in it. First wrestling game to have multiple costumes. Uh, oh God, just so many milestones for this one game. But then the N64 ones came out, and even they blew that away, which I didn't even think was possible. Like, to mm -hmm. know it could get better was just amazing. Because when yeah, I played that game, when I played that game, I said, I don't know how they're ever going to top that. And then they topped it with Verse the World, or uh, with uh, World Tour for N64, and then Revenge topped that, and WrestleMania 2000 topped that, and then finally No Mercy was the best out of all of them. I was like, wow. Well, here's some trivia for you, Ninja. Did you know that there was almost a PlayStation sequel that never came out from Verse the World? I did not know that. Yeah, it didn't get very far. Um, it was going to be... The working title was WCW 98. It was basically going to be a PlayStation version of World Tour. Um, there were some screenshots released... It was, the, like, I remember the Steiner brothers were in it, and they were fighting the Outsiders. 
Um, it didn't get very far. Uh, all the text on the screenshots was in Japanese, so it was still in development. But yeah, it uh, for whatever reason, they just decided to uh, commit only to N64 games at that point, which was kind of a shame because... Like I said, PlayStation owners got gypped as far as wrestling game goes. I mean, you know, Attitude might have been the best PlayStation wrestling game, and Attitude even isn't that great. I remember playing a TNA game, and it was still called TNA for the PS1. Or, yeah, I think, I don't know, either PS1 or PS2, but there was a TNA wrestling game, wasn't there? TNA had a game for, uh, that was actually the... uh, came out for xbox 360 i have it i don't remember which playstation version it came out for it had it had that that guy that made up death guy the suicide yeah there you go oh yeah it was called tna impact and it had um what's his face kurt angle on on the cover yeah kurt angle sting now was was nash the top booker because in the like game story mode he was like the top dude there (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. I just know he was so lazy that he showed up for the screening and he's not even in the game in his wrestling gear. Like, when you play as Nash, he's wearing street clothes. I was like, I hated that. I'm a big Nash fan. I always play as Nash, but that's the one game where I won't play as him because he's not even in his gear. They must have done that whole motion capture for him in, like, a day. Huh. But, yeah. Yeah, Joe, Kurt Angle, Sting, and Samoa Joe. I'm looking at it right now with uh, AJ Styles and Booker T in the background. And uh, I remember Jay Lethal was still doing his uh, Macho Man impersonation gimmick. Yeah. Hey, that game, that game, and the Triple A game, the Lucha Libre game, Hedo as Del Ring, they both had the same engine, actually. Mm. And they, they both were games that, just like. Uh, just like Rumble Roses, just like WCW Mayhem, you play it, it's like, oh, this is a good first try. But I'd like to see somebody do a little bit more with this. And then nothing ever happened again. So it's like, as they are, they're just kind of, eh. But there was definitely potential there. The Ultimate X match was a lot of fun to play in the uh, TNA Impact. Was that the one that was like their version of the... uh... Of the money in the bank, but you got to climb the zip line thing or whatever. Yeah, that was actually a lot of fun. Doing all of that and doing throws and slams off of the wires and things like that. Um, it was That was the most fun in the game. But uh, again, it wasn't really enough to carry the whole thing. There was not a lot of... We're back to like everybody only having like seven moves now again. And... Uh, you know, everybody only had one finisher, which meant that uh, other moves weren't even in the game. Like, you know, Kurt Angle would have, like, uh, God, I can't even remember. But, like, I don't think he even had his ankle lock. I think it was just the angle slam. And, like, mm. Sting had the Scorpion death lock, but not the death drop DDT. It was just, like, I don't know. It was so bare bones. And, again, this was in the era of, like, Fire Pro R had just come out for PlayStation 2. And again, Fire Pro is Fire Pro, but you're still talking a roster of like 200 people where you can make 300 more people, and everybody's got 50 fucking moves, and there's like 80 versions of a German suplex, and then you play this TNA game where everybody's got 10 moves, it's like, eh. It just felt unfinished. Yeah, I did take a look at that uh, TNA game back in the day, and it did feel, it felt rushed. It felt like really rushed for some reason. Absolutely. Like, there was potential. There was definitely some seeds there of a game that, with another year, could have been really good. But I felt like they just shipped it out the door to, like, hey, we're popular right now. Let's, you know, capitalize on that. But I think that was a mistake. 